Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I know that um, you're probably like, oh, she's wearing the same thing she was wearing in her last video. That's because I'm doing a few videos today. Um, I've been behind on my videos. I've been super busy. Um, so today I'm going to take advantage and create um, some content for YouTube. That's why I'm wearing the same thing. Don't mind my hair. I'm having a bad hair day. So just wanted to share that with you before I even begin. Uh, today's video is going to be on... 15 ways to stay organized. Um, I absolutely love these types of videos because I am a little bit OCD about, you know, certain things, including my home and just staying organized. I feel like it's the best way to, to live. I mean, I don't know how, and I don't understand how people can live in clutter, but anyways, switch is on. But these are 15 ways um, to stay organized. I hope you enjoy this video and let's start. The first way you can start um, getting organized is creating lists. I, I'm always writing stuff down. I'm always writing down what I need to do because there's times that I get so busy that I forget a lot of stuff. So I write things down on my um, calendar and I'll be showing you that. I have a calendar on my fridge. I have a calendar that I have on my desk. Um, I just stay, try to write everything as much as I can down because like I said, there's a lot of times that I get super busy with the house and different things. Um, that I'm doing and I tend to forget certain things so I've it's a habit now to just write stuff down so I create a list I create a to-do list um, for the day I'll, I'll write down like you know I need to clean this I need to pack that I need to run to the store and get these um, the groceries um, I need, you know, I write down like my supply list, what I'm running low on, um, just things like that. I keep a list for a lot of different things and you guys will not believe how helpful this is. Um, another thing is, um, the second thing is don't let things pile up. In other words, don't let dishes pile up, laundry pile up, uh, your work, uh, pile up because it just adds more um, stress to you later so when I cook I 99% of the time I'm gonna say I'm not gonna say every time but 99% of the time um, I'll go ahead and do my dishes right away or I'll be cooking and washing my dishes while I cook as you know as soon as I'm done with something I'll wash it out so I won't have to worry about it later um, the laundry the same as soon as I see that it's halfway there I'm already you know thinking okay I gotta do my laundry because I don't want it to pile up to the point where I'm gonna be stressed out because I have so much laundry um, the things with the home as well you know and um, what I do is I stretch out if I know it's a big project like for right now I have a big project I need to go into my closets and I need to um, declutter a lot of stuff from my closets Again, I already did it not too long ago, but I need to do it again. And I'm going to make it a habit to do that because a lot of times we keep things that we never need again or use or any of that. And it's just a big old mess in your closet. And honestly, you don't even need half the stuff you have. So I have a big project now. So what I do is I, I think about my week. I plan out my week. And... I say, okay, so Monday, I'm gonna clean this closet. On Tuesday, I'm gonna be home late, so I'm just gonna worry about a couple of loads of laundry. Um, you know, things like that. So don't let things pile up, because like I said, the more you let them pile up, the less you're gonna wanna do it, and the more stressed you're gonna be. Uh, number three, make sure everything has a home. Make sure that, you know, you have a drawer for like pens, um, you know, supplies and stuff like that, like for office, 
where you, if you need a, a pen, you know where it's at. If you need a stapler, you know where it's at. If you need a, uh, any glue or, you know, anything like that, you, you have a drawer for it. Same as for the, the dishes, you know, um, get a drawer just for the, the covers, for the bowls, you know, get, organize your bowls, organize your covers, organize everything in an organization where you know where everything is at. Everything should have a home. And if you can't find a home for, for it, get rid of it. If you don't find a home for it, get rid of it. You don't need it. Another thing is number four. Um, try to declutter, like I was saying, at least twice a month. You know, make it a, make it into a habit where twice a month you go into your closets, um, you go, you know, you go through your clothes, your socks, your kids' clothes, their socks and shoes and stuff that they don't fit. Get rid of that stuff. Toys that they don't use, get rid of it. Don't hold on to things just to hold on to them. I understand that as parents, sometimes we want to keep certain things that belong to our kids because, you know, it's memories and you want to keep those and that's fine and dandy. But let's face it, the majority of the things that we keep, we don't really need. You know, those clothes that he doesn't wear and, you know, you just like the way he looked in them, but he doesn't wear them. He hasn't worn them for a month. Get rid of it. Get rid of all of that stuff. There's things that we have, like, for example, personally, I love to shop for home decor. I love, you know, anything for the home, towels, um, home decor, uh, dishes and pots and pans, anything for the home. I love to shop for my home. But the reality is that, you know, once you change things around, because if you're like me, I like to change things around a lot. There's a lot of stuff that you don't end up using. So sell it, donate it. I, I've sold a lot of stuff and I offer up. I've given things to my family. I've uh, donated a lot of stuff. Get rid of it, guys. If you don't use it, if you don't need it, get rid of it. You won't believe how you would, how you feel after you walk into your house and you're, you know, you're clutter free. It's such an amazing feeling, you know, and it's just, it's good. It's good for you. It, it keeps you, you know, motivated. It keeps you, um, you know, like not stressed out and all of that stuff. So it's a good thing to declutter at least twice a month. Number five, put everything away as soon as you're done with it. Um, if you come home from work, Put your jacket away, put your purse where, you know, in your room where it belongs. Don't just throw things around because honestly, you're not going to be able, you're not going to be able. So as I was saying, you're not going to be able to, um, I mean, you're going to be, you're, you're not going to want to do it later. Once you get comfortable, you get home, you get comfortable. You're not going to want to pick anything up that you threw around when you came in. So just, you know, as soon as you're done with something, put it away. Um, like I said, whether it be shoes or your jacket, your purse, um, your keys, put them where they belong, um, in your kitchen, you know, after you use something or you're cooking something, put it away right away, things like that. It just, it helps so much to do that. Number six, make your bed in the morning. I feel when I don't make my bed in the morning, I feel like my house is a mess. Like it's something that has to be done. I wake up, I brush my teeth, I do whatever I gotta do, and I go back and I make my bed. Once my bed is made, I feel like I can tackle everything else. But when I don't make my bed, I feel like, I just feel like my house is dirty. Like, you know, like I'm, I haven't done anything. That's just me, but I recommend that when you get up in the morning, soon as you get up, make your bed. You'll feel a lot better. Number seven, keep a planner, organizer, up to date. Um, keep a planner. I'm going to show you mine. I have this and I absolutely love this. I got this at Burlington. And um, so I have this planner here. And I just got some stickers and I, you know, made it, you know, a little pretty or whatever. So this is my planner and every month, every month, um, I have, 
January, I write down, you know, everything I need to do. And then it also has um, the calendar itself. So I put down what videos I'm gonna create, appointments, birthdays, um, events, everything on this. And I check this all the time. And I also transfer everything that I put on here, I transfer it to my Google Calendar. And that way my Google Calendar, when I open up my computer or my, la or my phone, it gives me um, notifications of what I have to do or what events I have. So it's very important to keep an organizer. It helps so much. I also have an organizer, cal an organizer and calendar on my fridge. So again, I, what I transfer to my Google Calendar, what I have on here, I also have on my fridge. So every time I go in my kitchen, I look at my calendar and it reminds me of what I need to do. It's just an amazing way to keep you organized. You won't forget nobody's birthday. You won't forget you know, an appointment you have or an event that you have to go to. It's just a great way to do it. I mean, like I said, if you're like me, that I'm, I can be forgetful sometimes, I have, um, like I said, the organizer, the Google Maps, the Google, not the Google Maps, the Google calendars, and my calendars on my fridge, just reminding me of what I have to do for the month. I plan out my whole month on there. Another thing is keep a journal. Um, write down your thoughts, etc. Keeping a journal um, is very good for your mental, you know, um, for you mentally, because you can write down how you feel. You can write your thoughts down, how you, how you're feeling, you know, what you're dealing with, um, your all kinds of stuff. And believe it or not, when you write down all of that stuff, it releases stress, it releases anxiety because you're writing everything down and it's just a release of you know what you're feeling and stuff like that so keep a journal um, try to get in there and write as much as you can you know and and it, it helps out with anxiety depression and all of that stuff number nine do one task at a time um, in my home when I'm cleaning cooking I need to clean I need to do laundry I need to you know whatever um, by the way, I worked for many years and right now I'm at home. So at home, I, I do that. I start with my living room, I, then I work on my dining room, then I work on my bedroom, then I work on my kitchen, my bathroom, and every other room after that, my laundry room. I go through one room at a time. I don't try to do a million things at one time. I do one room at a time. And, you know, I make sure that everything's clean, that everything is put away, that everything is in this place. Um, and it's just, you know, a good way to do it. Everybody has their way of doing things. So let me just throw that out there. These are my uh, ideas as to how, you know, they help me. And I'm just offering them to you. But I know everybody does, you know, what they do, how they want to do it. It, it, my way doesn't mean that it's, you know, what's best for me doesn't mean that it's going to be best for you. Let's just say that. So these are just my thoughts. Just want to share them with you. But I know that everybody has their own, you know, way of doing things. Um, number 10, have a system for paperwork. I have two drawers, two long drawers, the Ikea long drawers that I had for makeup got rid of most of my makeup and now I have all my papers organized in these drawers. So I have like my light and gas, I have um, my my home bills, I have my, and my bills that, you know, have to do with the house, like rent, um, light, gas, you know, whatever. Anything that has to do with the home are in one drawer. Anything with my vehicles are in a second drawer. Anything with my kids are in a third drawer anything with any so every drawer has a purpose and I organize everything like I have a drawer with my husband's um, pay stubs and his you know paperwork from work um, everything has its place because when something 
has to be found immediately. I can just run to the drawer and I know where it's at instead of going through like a million different papers. So I know, you know, I know like, I know what, what where everything is at. Number 11, plan your day uh, by day. Um, plan your day the day before. And I'm looking down because I wrote my notes. Plan your day the day before. So for example, I know what I'm cooking tomorrow because on my calendar in the kitchen, I have the calendar of the month and I also have a separate calendar that's pertaining to meals. So every day I know what I'm cooking because I plan out my menu for the week. That way I don't be like, man, what am I gonna make? What am I gonna make? I plan my menu so Monday I know what I'm making, Tuesday I know what I'm making, Wednesday, and that's what I do. So plan the day, the next day, the day before. Um, if you have kids, pick out their clothes. Um, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of moms, what they do is they they go to you know Family Dollar, Walmart, whatever. They buy a bin, a plastic bin with different drawers, at least five, and in every drawer they put what the kids are wearing each day. So they don't have to be digging through all kinds of stuff early in the morning while they're trying to rush to work because every um, let's say Friday. They do their laundry and they have their kids' bins like ready to go for the week. Uh, they pack snacks, um, you know, in separate bowls. If you need lunch, you can pack your lunches for the day. Plan your day the day before, um, even days ahead. Plan ahead, and you will never feel the stress or all of that that you know that a lot of people go through because they don't plan ahead and they leave things for the last minute. A lot of people leave things for the last minute. I don't know how they can do that. I cannot do that. But some people do. But the best thing is to plan ahead. Uh, number 12, don't uh, procrastinate. So if you know you need to do it, just get it done. Get it out of the way. Don't sit there and be like, oh, you know, um, I'll just do it later or I'll do it tomorrow because it'll never get done. Trust me, I know I've been there. So do it when you can do it and get it out the way. Number 13, ask for help. If you feel like you're overwhelmed because you have work and kids and home and, you know, other events going on. I mean, some women have a whole bunch of stuff going on all the time and, you know, Ask for help, you know, just say, you know what, I need to do this or I need to do that. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? There's times that we're not able to help in certain ways, but we can help in other ways. We can always help um, somehow in some way, you know. So number 13, ask for help. Number 14, and this is important, you have to take time for yourself. You have to take time for yourself. We're mothers, we're wives, we're, you know, daughters and sisters, and we have so many hats, you know, big careers. We have so many hats that we wear as women. So we need to make sure that we take time for ourselves. Take a day to go do your nails, your eyebrows, you know, your hair, a massage, a night out, you know, with the girls for drinks. Take time for yourself. And this is something that I have to learn because I have not learned this lesson yet. And lastly, number 15, stay ahead of the game. Stay ahead of the game. Like I said, planning, 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 planning. That's key. Write everything down. Organize your paperwork. Organize your kids' clothes and, you know, what they need for the week. Uh, have a meal plan for the week. Um, you know, create events on your calendar, on your Google Maps. That's always going to help you. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take time to 